Hello, I'm Itai Segev, a senior kernel developer at Wolfram Research, and today I'd like to talk to you about some new ways to deploy Mathematica, as well as ways to control your computer and your networks from it. I will focus on the all-new Wolfram script, both interactive uses and running script files. Then I'd like to talk about some language-level networking features, as well as some supporting functions. The experts among you may be familiar with Wolfram script or Mathematica script we've had since version 8, which allows you to write self-contained Wolfram language scripts. In version 11, we've completely rewritten Wolfram script, greatly expanding its scope. It now includes running one-shot evaluations from the command line, API functions in the cloud, package files, automatically exporting to a variety of formats, as well as a new line-wise mode. Let's start a live demo and see what happens. A simple example is Wolfram script code dollar version, which evaluates dollar version in a local kernel. In this case, it returns 1100 for Mac. However, Wolfram script doesn't need a local kernel. If we just add dash cloud, it'll evaluate in the cloud. If we haven't previously connected, it will ask us to authenticate. We see that the result will be 11.0.0 for Linux because that's what our cloud servers run. To evaluate a cloud API, just specify dash API with a URL. Arguments are supplied using dash args. Since we've already authenticated, it doesn't ask us to log in a second time. We see from the output that we could have supplied an optional argument y. We can simply add y equals world after the x argument and supply both arguments. To run the package file, we just say Wolfram script dash file file name. Good afternoon. I am a Wolfram language 1100 script. I was first executed in Urbana, Illinois, on the 24th of August, 2016. For my next couple of examples, I'm going to need something on standard input, for which I'll use a file containing some palindromes. One of the advances in version 11 is that there's now a language level way to refer to standard input, namely dollar script input string. Here I'm going to string reverse that input and I'm going to use palindromes.txt as my input. We see that the file is completely reversed with the first line coming last. However, suppose we wanted to just reverse each line of input. Well, then we can just add dash linewise to our input, and now every line will be string reversed individually. Now let's talk about Wolfram language scripts. As in earlier versions, you can create self-contained Wolfram language scripts for Unix environments. New in version 11, we support Unix-like environments for Windows, such as Cygwin and MinGW. Also, all the new options, including cloud evaluation, can now be used. Before I start my demo, let me just mention that the contents of the script files can be found in this notebook for later perusal. My first example takes the names of two cities and returns the distance between them in kilometers. As we can see, the contents of this file are very simple. It simply declares that it is a function taking two cities, which uses interpreters to interpret the command line arguments as cities, and then computes the geodistance between them. My second example illustrates that there is a language level way to refer to the script and its arguments. If we call squares.m with no arguments, dollar script command line contains only the script name. On the other hand, if we call it with several arguments, they all appear in dollar script command line. And that's the all new Wolfram script. Now I'd like to describe some Wolfram language functions which are helpful for system administrators. The first of these is host lookup. It allows you to convert host names to IP addresses and IP addresses back into host names. Ping time is obviously a version of the well-known ping utility for network timing. Here we create a histogram of pinging the Wolfram.com website 100 times. We also have a new family of functions for cookie management. Suppose we were to read from Wolfram.com and WolframAlpha.com. We might ask, what were all the cookies received while reading from Wolfram.com? Or what are all cookies received in the current session? Or we could clear all the cookies. 
Another new set of functionality is related to encryption. You can create symmetric and asymmetric key pairs and encrypt and decrypt expressions. Here we generate an asymmetric key pair and encrypt a very important message 42 using our public key. That encrypted object can only be decrypted using the private key, which must be kept secure. Another new function is file system map. It allows you to easily apply a function to all files in the directory or directory tree. First, we look at the sizes of all the files in dollar installation directory. Then we might take a look at all the files in the first two levels of dollar installation directory. This will return a nested association. We still see the two files we saw above, but now for each directory we get another association. For system files, it's empty because system files doesn't contain any actual files, it contains only additional directories. On the other hand, macOS has an association of file name goes to value pairs, where we see the new Wolfram script, for example. The last new function I'd like to cover today is byte array. This provides efficient storage of a list of bytes. If we were to create a list of a thousand bytes and convert them to a byte array, that byte array would only occupy a little over one kilobyte in memory. Uh, this is different from just the list of numbers, which is eight times as large, because on a 64-bit machine, every integer is eight bytes long. This is obviously very useful when sending and receiving network traffic. It's also used internally by other uh, data structures. If we look inside the encrypted object we saw above, we would find a byte array hiding inside of it. Those are the new functions I wanted to cover today. I've listed here some additional resources for learning more about these and related functions. I thank you very much for your attention, and now I'd like to see if there are any questions.